everyone. We're excited today because we're talking to one of our featured artists uh, for August, Dennis Martin, and he has this wonderful show of uh, pieces that kind of cover um, the city and Lancaster, and there he is. <laughs> uh, nice to see you, Dennis, and uh, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Okay. Um, in general, the show that I'm bringing to the Red Raven this month focuses on the city of Lancaster. Um, having grown up here and gone away and traveled for a long time and come back, I really gained an appreciation for um, the city of Lancaster, specifically the beauty of not just the people, but the buildings, the architecture. It's unlike anything that I've ever seen in all my travels through the country. I really wanted to focus on it and um, doing the things that I do kind of piece by piece, bring out different characteristics of the different town or the aspects of the people as well. So tell me about this piece because it's my absolute favorite. Uh, it's a favorite of mine too. Um, it's called Bygone Groceries and it's supposed to capture the way grocery stores, um, neighborhood Super, not supermarkets, grocery stores were much different back then than they are now. We have supermarkets, Walmart sells produce and food, and many markets. Um, I came across this old sash, uh, probably from the 50s, maybe even the 40s or the 30s. Um, and what I did is got some masonite, prepped it, and I tried to create uh, an image of what things might have been like you know, 50, 60 years ago. So the painting that you did is behind the actual glass of the actual window, but the wholesome sign is the original that's on the front surface, right? Yes. I, I took the window sash, I went out and got a piece of masonite, prepped it, and did my painting on that, and then mounted the masonite uh, painting onto the window sash itself. I just love it because it's like a little piece of history um, with your amazing creative uh, take on it. So, great job. Okay, in this painting, um, it's actually two panels. Um, I utilize long, narrow canvases. Uh, one of the things I like to do about long, narrow canvases, it allows uh, me as an artist to really change uh, the viewer's perspective and you can do some interesting things with them. Normally I had to use just one canvas, but I wanted to capture some of the beautiful craftsmanship um, on the buildings in Lancaster. And if you ever walk down the street and just look up house after house, building after building, you see amazing craftsmanship. And the Fulton with its beautiful statue uh, definitely lends itself to that. Again, as with the Fulton, I was captivated by the Central Market. You know, the building's an icon. And one of the things I liked about this, while it's easy to look up and see Robert Fulton on the Fulton Theater, because things are kind of tight in the alleyways, it's not really easy to look up and appreciate um, the, the height and the magnitude of this building. And one of the things I tried to capture was within the building, there's a lot of activity going on that's made up of a lot of individual transactions and interfaces between people. So I tried to capture two of them and putting the bench in the center invites the viewer to kind of take a load off, sit down, and reflect on the painting for a while. I also noticed you did these wonderful overviews. Tell me about these. Okay, where this started, I spent about 25 years as a management consulting and probably flown about 10,000 flights in my life. Wow. And I've always been fascinated looking out the window and seeing how um, we as society or people organize ourselves as terms of uh, commerce, uh, housing, how we connect with roads, uh, sidewalks, and the actual motion. And what I did in these paintings, you'll see the traffic, um, I kind of took to paint what photographers do with time-lapse photography. Central Market again, 
and we're looking at the alley of Central Market. And I don't really have much as far as human activity that's explicit, but it's kind of implicit. You'll see a bike is parked against the side of the market and right across from an open door, which implies that you know somebody rode their bike up, set their bike and went inside. Um, also the market, we had to go inside and take a look. And here's a stand where the lady's preparing her apples. And there's another gentleman in the back um, eating what he just probably bought was maybe a shoe fly pie <laughs> or something else. And there's a clock above him again, which shows or indicates time is passing. And while we still have some markets, they're not a part of uh, our everyday life like they used to be. But they are in Lancaster. Amen, right? Yes, they are in <laughs> Lancaster.